You guys keep working. I'm just going to catch up with you. Line or something, you gotta be careful about your scale you pick. So if you, um, I don't know how many guys here drew this, it's not a bad idea even if you do a shortcut. Right, so at zero, it's, um, and here's where you got to be real careful. At zero, it's, uh, so this is negative, times positive, times positive, times positive, so it's negative. Don't forget the fact that it's a negative multiplier out front. <laughs> cool, okay, good. Uh, and then it, uh, two zero, it stays the same sign, right? Mm -hmm. At five, it stays the same sign, and at negative four, it changes sign. This is poor little dude's only increasing for a little bit, and it's a good job. Okay. Um, so you guys kind of cool through here? Okay. Uh, the one thing I wasn't careful enough about was I made my scale before I figured out what my test points need to be because I don't know how much further down below 800 is going to go. Huh? 
is negative two and the negative three thousand. Yeah, so I've got to go back and change my scale. So I can plot my x values. The x values are easy. Uh, two zero, five zero, negative four zero. And here I know it's going to look like it's uh, it's up. What was I thinking? It's uh, then it can become zero, right? And then it's negative, and then it goes back to zero, and then it's still negative, it comes back to zero, it's still negative. So it's going to look really roughly like that. So I need to know uh, how deep these go in between. I need to know in between here how deep those go. So I think you just told me you did P of negative 2? Yeah. And you got? Uh, negative 3136. Negative 3036? No, 136. Negative 3136? Yeah. Okay. And then what's a good thing to use in there? 3. 3, sure. So P of 3 would be what? Negative six. Negative six. Okay. <laughs> All right. So my scale needs some changing. So I need to be able to go all the way down to three thousand. Where's that? Yeah. Okay. So I need to get down there. So what's a good scale for me to use? Five hundred. Five hundred. Outputs are not really a huge concern. You just change your scale to fit them in. What well, kind of sucks is when you have really large and kind of small relatively outputs. But then again, I'll, I'll let you kind of overstate it so you can fit stuff in. Um, so this sucker comes in from up. It's positive first. Uh, negative 2 is negative 31, 36, so it's roughly right there. And 3 is negative 56, and we'll just overstate that a little bit. Kind of okay? Otherwise, it's just a straight line there, basically. Um, all right, so then I've got it starts up, comes down, goes through negative 4. Right? Then it touches uh, here. It's got to come back up. Now, where's my line? Thank you, thank you. All right. So then it's got to go back up through the Y intercept. It touches at 2. And then it goes, touches there, right? I can kind of follow and it touches there. And then it just keeps going down. So it does match up with my end behavior that I predicted, right? That is certainly nothing that's exceptionally pretty. So I don't expect any more than that from you guys. But I do need to, again, I do need to see your work represented on your picture. Even if your work is wrong somewhere and it doesn't match with what the calculator says, I don't care. I need to see your work translated onto your picture. And if you do it in the calculator, what does it look like? What's that? Let's see. So I got negative two. show that it does. If I zoomed in there, it would look like this. It's just not enough room for it to show that. Does that make sense? But it's basically what ours looks like, right? 
Yes? Can you just really quick go over the multiplicity for this problem again? So, at 2, it came from this factor that has a multiplicity of 2. Okay. Multiplicity is just a quick way of saying it shows up twice, right? Or a different way of saying it, it's not quicker. Uh, so it's going to act like a parabola at 2. The parabola would come in and touch, right? Mm -hmm. So at 2, sure enough, it touches. It turns there, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to do the same thing at 5. It's going to touch and keep going down. It's just going to act like a parabola. At around negative 4, it's going to look more like actually a straight line here. It's so a first power. So it's going to go straight through. So odd powers go through meaning it changes sign here. Even powers, it turns, meaning it stays on the same side of the x-axis, so it stays the same sign. Does that make sense, the idea of multiplicities? Right. Okay. Yes, sir? I'm kind of lost in the y uh, intercept. How do you find the y-intercept of dogs? Make x zero. So you get negative 2 times 4, right? Times 4 times 25. 4 times 25, 100 times 8, negative. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, when you get in trouble ever doing like the way I did it was I thought of, I just found the end way and then I was like, okay, here it's through, here it turns, here it turns. So will I ever get in trouble using that later instead of doing the whole line thing? Oh, no, not really. I mean, the line thing gives a quick visual that you can make a really, really rough sketch. Yeah. It's kind of nice to have, and it, well, that's what I do. But it's just that I mean, finding the positive and negative doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right because it starts end behavior, and then you can go from there. Okay. So you fill in the pluses and minuses in an even quicker way. I don't even do that. It's I just beautiful. so what Ryan does is he knows it's up, so he knows it starts off positive, and then he knows it changes sign, and then he knows it stays the same sign on both sides. It's beautiful. <coughs> Nothing wrong. With it. Okay, and it won't get me into trouble later. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> As long as you have a valid way to get those pluses and minuses up there, you're, you're golden. All right, how we do it? Deep breath. What All right. So uh, uh, I gave you a problem here that's actually a lot harder than any problem in this section of form. Some of you guys are like, yeah, you did. <laughs> but I mean, this is one we just did all together. There's no pressure. I'm not ever going to see you unless you show me what you did. Uh, so it's a nice one. It's practice. You use a bigger basketball. Learn how to play basketball. You ever done that? You ever play basketball? If you can make that sucker, you can make the smaller one in there. Better. So you start with an ugly one. That's and the ideas are all the same. Now what we're going to learn in the next couple sections is what if they gave this to me not factored? We have no factoring methods until we learn synthetic division to to attack it. <coughs> Nothing would work. Trust me. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to focus on how synthetic division can help us factor stuff. Um, so any, any other questions on this here? What was it that told me how to set up my scale? I'm kind of happy that I made a mistake. So I first set my scale based on my y-intercept. But that's not definitely going to be the lowest or highest point, right? The minimum and maximum, the in-betweens. Yeah, so after you figure out what your in-betweens are, and you put those in, that's what you should base your your scale on. You with me? Yes, sir. So if you see us do the work, but then we're like, okay, we put it in our calculator, and we find out that it goes a lot deeper than what, like, say if I use, because if I, I used one, and it didn't go anywhere near deep enough. Okay. Because that was the middle point between four and... Well, then all you do is you go back and you erase one and you put in the other one, right? Yeah. But That's fine. Okay. So as long as your work is captured on your graph, I'm happy. All right. Cool. Because I hate it when somebody says, line shift is three and over here it's suddenly seven and, and, and negative seven and that's what it's supposed to be. I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell? Don't just copy from your graph count. Make sure. And your graph calculator tells you, go back, you did something wrong. As long as you put it in here right, that really sucks when somebody gives me something that doesn't have a damn thing to do with the problem because they didn't put it in the calculator correctly. And that's where you got to be careful. You should trust yourself more than you trust that. All right. So let's, let's revisit synthetic division. There were a few people that weren't here the other day, so I wanted to do a couple straight up synthetic division problems. These are not necessarily going to go in evenly. We will have a remainder. 
more than likely, because I'm just going to make these up on the spot. So if either of these go in evenly, it's going to be really, really neat to play the lottery. I know this won't go in evenly. First one sort of together. Um, how do I start to set this guy up? Two. 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 Yeah. Two. In the penalty box goes change the sign for this guy. So instead of in long division, I had to change the sign every damn time I did it. I just changed the sign right at the beginning. <coughs> the division tries to take out of here all the unnecessary variables. I just want to focus on the numbers, focus on the coefficients. So what would I write here? Oh, it would be negative two. No, because the first thing I do is I change the sign. Because on, on long division, I have to change the sign every step. Every time I do, I have to change the sign. I have to change the sign. So they just say, change the freaking sign once at the beginning. So if it was x plus 2, it would be... Exactly. So that's going to be negative, negative 4. Point. Beautiful. So in the penalty box goes this guy's root, really. And what goes up here? Because I wasn't... Missing anybody, right? If I'm missing somebody, hint, hint, I need to put Zero. zeros. So how does this work then? Drop the one. Drop the one, good. Two times one is two. Math. And real quick, just in case you weren't here yesterday, uh, or just to remind those of you who were, this is really good to see the see this happening long division. This is just so awesome. I know you got to let this go. Um, so this would be x cubed. Why is it one x cubed? Because because this is a one. So that one is going to be in the answer. If that was a three, it would be three in the answer because I would have put a three there, right? So x cubed times x is four. X cubed that's negative two. Change the sign, and there's a negative seven plus two right there. So synthetic division just cuts to the chase. It just says, here's the most important parts. But it only works if you're dividing by a linear with a one coefficient. Yeah, so it's very limited in what it can do. So why'd you only do two again? Here? Yeah. So it's related to, what did I have to do once I did x cubed times x and x cubed times negative two? I then have to change the signs, right? So if I would have just changed the sign from the beginning, you know, I changed the whole sign really, but if I would have just changed the signs here to begin, I wouldn't have to do it every time. So the synthetic says, let's change the sign right now, right at the beginning. Okay, no, I mean, under the seven, negative seven. Uh, two times one is two. Add, two times negative five is negative 10. Add, two times negative five is still is negative 10. Add, two times negative 11. And, and so what is your answer then? X cubed. Good, because it was fourth power divided by x should be x cubed now. Good, minus 21 over what I divided by. That would be the remainder term. Cool. So if you're trying to factor this, that sucks. You want what to show up here? Zero. Zero. Zero means you factored it, and you can keep going. So you guys try that one. Don't forget the major hint I gave you a minute ago.
reason why I tracked. Just because we don't write zeros down doesn't mean they're not there. So synthetic says, hey, they're there. Of course, I put the opposite out there in the penalty ox. Yeah. We didn't, if that wasn't a linear divisor. You'd have to do either, you'd have to do long division. If it was like x squared plus 4, I'd have to do long division. If it was x squared minus 4, I could divide by 2 and negative 2. I could divide by x plus 2. And then what I get, I can divide by x minus 2. You see, so there are ways around it if you can factor that what's on the bottom. If you can't factor it, you're stuck with long division. Yeah. You can even do synthetic division with complex numbers. Yeah. Or not. You don't have to. Um, so how does this work? You're going to bring the one down. Bring the one down. Negative 4. Get that multiply. Negative 4. Add. 16. 16. Multiply. 16. Add. 64. Multiply. 67. Add. Multiply. 268. Add. 266. Beautiful, right? So this can obviously get go crazy very quickly. <coughs> so what is my answer? It's 32 minus 4 squared. 16 x minus 67, 276 over x minus plus 1. Yes. So for those of you who hate uh, factoring cubes, um, that's not Bless you. Now, this top is factorable, right? Yeah. It would be, little dude would be 1x minus 1, 4. So this should go in evenly, and what's left is going to be the big dude, right? So if I do this for, what would I put up here? 1, one. Zero. 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 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 16, 64, 0. So that would be the big dude. Right? So I'd have an x minus 4. To factor this, this would be factored as x minus 4 times x squared. Because it was cubed, so now it's squared. Bam. Kind of nice. It's kind of a stretch, though, if you don't like cubes to so suddenly do something like this to it. But oh well. Kind of shows you how it does factor stuff. Good. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that's synthetic by itself. Uh, let that be awesome. Especially when you realize you don't have to do long division for certain situations anymore. Um, so now what I want to talk about is we always want to try to find the specific numbers that make the remainder zero because we're going to start to try to factor stuff. So I need remainder zero so I get a, a complete a whole number expression. Um, so remind me by <laughs> remind me uh, let me see one that actually works would be nice. Here we go. Thank you. Miss. Um, let's try this dude here. Oh no, something too evil. Yeah. <coughs> Now this one could be one that looks like it might be doable. Can you can you factor this directly? Can you see very quickly that grouping will freak the hell out? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Right? So who remembers what we talked about yesterday? How do I start to determine what might go into the penalty box to try to do this? What times to equal twelve? Good, factor the twelve. Now if there was just to think ahead. If there was a number here that was not 1, we have to figure out what could happen. So we'll talk about that here in a bit. So like we always do with factoring, we start off with a slightly easier situation, and then we expand it for what the hell if there was an 8 there. 
right? Then things get kind of gross. Your list gets bigger. So my list of possible <coughs> rational zeros. Oh yeah. Would include what? Yeah, plus or minus one. Twelve. Good. Good two. Three. Four. Four. Six. Twelve. So bang, bang, bang. Just kind of work out and you make sure you get all the factors. Good. So every one of you pick a number. It would really freak me out if nobody gets one that works. Pick your favorite number, try it, and let me know if you get one that works. So the, the next thing we're going to do is start to try to cut that list down before we have to do any work. Because you can imagine, I, go, I put 60 there and the list is crazy big. I put a number here and it not only is it that big, it also includes fractions as possibilities. And you have to add all those in. Holy crap, the list can get big. But I can crowdsource this problem. So you guys, yeah? Can't you just like work backwards? Sort of like, like you start off with your list right here, you have one. Right here. So we can like make this. Like, let's oh, say I see. Sort of. Work backwards. So okay, what would have to be here? Negative uh, twelve. Okay, okay. Work on that idea. I never thought about trying to do that. I, I don't think it would. Let me see. Because then you got to figure to get a negative twelve here. Not only would you have to figure out what you go here to add, but then you have to figure out whatever's there is multiply. So there's, um, it feels like there's a little too many unknowns yeah. to work that backwards. But I like the idea. <clears throat> so has anybody got one that works? Yes? All right, so negative three. All right, let's try it out because I want to take this to the next step after this. Anybody else try negative three? You're th oh, okay. oh, sorry. I was gonna say, uh, I love that you picked negative three. I'm sure probably most people picked one or two. So let's see, negative three. What do I put here? One, one negative one, negative one, 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 Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, cool. So now I have x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals, what, what's this come from? x plus 3. x plus 3. What's 4? Cool. And then to finish this out, we've Broken this down to a quadratic, which we can attack all day, all night. What's that going to factor down to? Plus two, minus two, minus two. Minus two, minus two, thank you. So this can be a problem where I say, uh, everything that was on that handout we did earlier, but it starts off not factored. So your first step would be to factor it, but you have to use this new method. And the first step in that is to figure out what the possibilities are. So you can imagine, if there isn't a way to cut that list down, or if I teach you and you don't understand the ways to cut that list down, your work could be rather much, right? It might take you, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, screw it! <laughs> right? Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Alright, so let's talk about, actually, let's do this. Where'd he go? Well, uh, yeah, let's talk about two more things, and then I have one more handout for you. Um, this dude, Descartes. Yes, sir. So I was just wondering. So you're telling us that you don't want us to kind of do that, right? Because there's so many of. No, to, I want you. You, want you must to do this. Well? We're about to discuss two okay, okay. two things that discuss. might help us cut that list down. Okay. It's gonna. Okay. So, Descartes, what's one thing that he did, do you think, if you look at just that part of his name? Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system. So he, supposedly he was lying in his bed watching some bug crawl across the ceiling and he thought, I can make a Cartesian coordinate system. 
No one has done it yet. Good. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what he said. <laughs> Uh, but he also did this kind of thing, uh, Descartes' Rule of Signs. And, and this is the one that's either incredibly helpful or it doesn't do shit for you. So let's see what, it, what it's all about. So if I'm given some polynomial, and let me start off with an extreme example just to get the idea of why this might kind of work. Um, it doesn't really matter what I make. What's one interesting aspect about that thing I just created? It's all positive. It's all positive. So the only kind of values that I, th I really want this to totally make sense, the only kind of values I could possibly plug in there to make that become zero, because that's the whole thing of factoring, I'm trying to find the zeros of it, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing I could possibly, the only kind of number that could make this zero is negative. Right? If I put any positive number here, it's, it's, it's going to be at least three. Right? So if there's no negatives anywhere in here, that means there could be no positive roots. So if I had this thing, and let me make this, if I made this uh, 36, your list would be plus minus one, two, three, four, six, eight, nine, twelve, holy shit. Right? <laughs> But if it's this, I can immediately cut that list in half because I, I wouldn't include any of the pluses. It would all be negatives I would try to put in here, right? All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. Cool, cool, cool. So that kind of makes sense. So, so it goes beyond that, thankfully. Um, let me see if you guys are, are, are cool with this. So this is one situation. So this would have no positive roots. So it immediately cuts my list in half if this happens. So what if I had, let me see if you guys can, can get this, and then I'll just give you the rule itself. I just want to explain a little bit about why it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, if you're interested, this is on page 256. There's a little bit more to this I've got to explain, but uh, I want to do the extreme cases first. Um, so what if I had one little switch I made here? So what was I? What did I just do? But more specifically, which signs did I change? The odd ones. So now look at what's p of now. Now this one definitely uh, the roots are going to have to be what kind of numbers or what could could they be? They could be positive or negative, maybe. But let's watch watch what happens here. If I put a negative x in, what happens here? Which signs would switch? Oh, no. What's the negative x to the fourth power? Oh, x to the fourth. Because the fourth power kills the negative, right? So, the negatives would switch. so all the odd ones will switch signs. Negative x cubed is negative x cubed. So that will become a plus 2x cubed, right? But negative x squared is positive x squared. It kills the negative. Are you with me? Yeah. And of course, negative negative x is x. So now it's kind of become this again. So if I put a negative x in, and it comes out to this same kind of extreme situation, this was saying there were no positive roots. This would mean there's no negative roots, because I put a negative x in, and it got to this impossible situation. You guys kind of with me? So this would mean that there would be no negative roots. I just want to give you now, now this is nowhere near the complete picture of what he says. But this is a little bit of motivation about why what he says, why it makes sense. Yes, Does that work in, in the first one where you have 5x, if you had a negative 5x squared? No, they all have to be, have to be positive. positive. There has to be no changes in sign. It's really what Descartes' rule of sign is all about. That's only where all the terms are positive, right? Yeah, no positive roots only if every single term is positive. There's no change in sign. I like it. So here there's a bunch of changes in sign, so there could be a bunch of positive roots. But there happens to be no negative roots possible here. How are we doing so far? Okay, all right. Uh, moving on. <laughs> I don't give him anything. Um, so here's what he says. Here's, here's the card school signs. The whole thing. 
like some spin off of Game of Thrones. Um, rule of science says if I'm given some polynomial, if uh, that polynomial has, uh, sorry, how do I say this? Given a polynomial, the number of changes in sign. Equal to, uh, how is this? Equal to the possible positive rational roots or decreased by two. Holy shit, is that all? Right. Yes, I'll try. So, how many changes in sign were there here? It starts off positive and then it changes sign. So that's one. One, two, two three, four. So Descartes says there could be four positive roots, or two, or zero. That's what the last piece means. Now, I really want this to make sense. If, if they're not rational roots, what kind of roots are they? It's crazy. And where do irrational roots come from? Imaginary numbers? No, 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 careful. They don't go complex yet. Just irrational. Irrational is still real. It just means it's like radical 7 plus or minus 2. I kind of gave it away there. What do we use to find irrational roots? It means we weren't able to factor it, so we had to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula has plus or minus in it. So if I get one irrational answer. I actually have two. I have to have them show up in pairs, plus or minus. Are you with me? So they can either all be rational, meaning seven, one thirds, two, negative five eighths. Those are all rational, right? Or if there's less rational, they have to be less by two. Because every time I get an irrational, I actually got two irrational, because the quadratic formula has negative eight plus or minus square root, blah, 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 it's going to have two irrational. Yes. Right? So all i got to do is count how many times does that sign change. And then it's either equal to the number of positive roots or it decreases by two. Just hang on. And of course the second piece is all about uh, negative. And of course it's the same thing just with P of negative x. And the same stuff applies there, right? So let's do a couple examples real quick. See how this works. Do you somewhat understand the theory behind this? I mean, there were the extreme cases, I think, right? Extreme cases. The idea of irrationals are going to show up in pairs, and that's why I always take it down by two for the possible answers. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how many possible <coughs> rational roots am I going to have. If I have fewer, it's going to be fewer by two each time. Because that must mean they're irrational and they would come from the quadratic, plus or minus. <coughs> they always show up in conjugate pairs, which often sounds like Conjugal notes, conjugate pairs. Um, so let's do a couple quick examples. So if I had this polynomial, whew, I like it. How many answers will this definitely have to have? So. Seven roots, right? Answers, I mean, set equal to zero is going to have seven answers. Some of those could be rational, some of those could be irrational, and some of those could be complex. But if I add up all the answers, including all the multiplicities, if two shows up five times, you're going to count it five times. It's got to come out to be seven answers total. That's kind of nice. Um, so Descartes, two things. Look at P of X itself. How many times does the sign change? Once. One. Two. You see that? It was positive, then negative, then positive. Do you guys see how to see that? Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four. So how many positive rational 
roots are there? Possible positive rational roots. There could be four, or two, or two, or, two, or, two. or none. So see, this is where Descartes wouldn't really help us out much. There could be no positive roots, but there could be two, there could be four. So it doesn't really help. And I told you going in, Descartes' rule of science is either going to help immensely or it isn't going to do any damn thing for us. Right? Yeah, well, what about since it's just a one at the end? I mean, multiples of one, that makes kind of... No, 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 no. I'm only looking at sign changes. So it was positive to negative to positive. No, I got that. To negative, yeah. Yeah, but if I was doing this problem, I could only divide by one, you're right. Yeah, so that would be a nice one. I have very few things to choose from. Um, so here, let me do that. <laughs> so what about, that's not so, so what about if I have to look at P of negative X, what does P of negative X look like? Which, which terms would change sign? The odd power terms, because those are the ones that would keep the negative, right? All the even power terms would kill the negative. When you square or fourth power negative, it becomes positive, right? So this is going to become negative x to the seventh. This is going to stay. This is going to become negative five x to the fifth. That's going to stay in there. This is going to become minus three x cubed. That's going to stay. Go on. Negative. That's going to become negative x, and of course the plus one is going to stay plus one. No matter what I do to it, plus one hundred. Or one hundred. Thanks. So how many sign changes do I see? One, two, three. So for how, what's the possible negative rational roots? Zero. Yeah, three. Two. No, you have to go down by how much each time? One. So two. You have to go down by two, so it's three, one, and that's it. Because the next one will be like negative one. They can't have negative answers. And the negative answer, if I get near you, you lose an answer. No, no, no. Screw that. Right? Not the anti answer. That'd be cool. That would be neat. Pretty strange superhero. Um, so, so in this case, Descartes' rule of science would not do terribly much to me. I might try the positive stuff out first, just because there's a probability that there's a lot of them. But there's also a probability that there's none of them, right? So Descartes is good to start with. Descartes is kind of the lame one, or it's the kick-ass one. It's one or the other. So we have one other thing that will help us. And that involves a little bit of work in a problem. And it kind of relates a little bit to Descartes. And this one's called upper and lower bounds, yes. So why is that the top the positive that there's zero and in the negative there are zero for possible rational? Because you couldn't get zero by going down by two. Okay. Yeah. So, so so another way to look at this is you know at least one of your negative roots works, has to. Maybe three do. So maybe actually I'd start there. There must be at least one negative number in your list of possibilities that works. So maybe I would start with the negatives because I'm guaranteed maybe there's three, but there's at least one, right? Positives, there could be four, but there might be none of them, and I might go through all of them and go crazy, right? So Descartes helps you out a little tiny bit, but not a huge amount. So the only time that this rule is really, really valuable is when it only changes sign like once. Or when it changes sign at all is when it's really immediately valuable. When it does change sign or when it when it doesn't change sign at all, or it's when it's immediately once. valuable. Yeah. If it only changes sign once, then you're guaranteed one of those answers. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have a possible seven answers, when you try four positive and three negative. I want you to understand. Uh, if there were zero positive roots, if I did this and it turns out I have zero positive and one negative, all the other roots have to be what kind? Irrational. Irrational or imaginary, right? <laughs> if, I, uh, if it turns out that all, none of my positive uh, numbers work, 
right? The list I make of possible things to try in the penalty box. If none of my positive one works, and only one of my negative ones work, and how many answers were there supposed to be? Six. That means all the other six have to be imag imaginary or complex or irrational. And it's good. Six would have, you know, conjugate pair, conjugate pair, conjugate pair. That would work. Now again, you guys have got to let this... We, we haven't done a concrete problem yet, so this is still kind of like floating around like, the hell, why did Descartes have to do shit? Um, all right. <laughs> And here's the second guy. He's actually kind of related to this, and it's much more practical, and it's much more, uh, so obviously I kind of like this one better. It's, it's much more useful in the middle of a problem. It actually tells you something nice. Uh, this is called upper and lower bounds. This is still 3-3, three, three, right? Still, uh, it's 3-4. Oh, we have uh, when we start talking about Descartes, that was new stuff. So the handout and the problem you guys worked on a graph, that was review of 3.3. We finished 3.3 last time. Then I started doing new stuff. So this is all been 3.4. Descartes and this. Um, so let me pick one now. Works. So I want you to take a minute and uh, divide this by x minus 2, synthetic. If you're expecting it to go in evenly, I'm sorry. So obviously in the penalty box goes two, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have one. What do you have to put here? Careful. Zero. 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 Good. Negative three, two, negative five. We didn't have any x cubed, so I gotta represent that. So I get one, two, two, four, four, one, two, three, four. Now, that didn't go any evenly, so x minus 2 is not a factor of this. And of course, it's kind of silly of us to try it because it's not a factor of 5, but oh, too bad for us. Um, but to illustrate a point, the answer came out, these would all be positive coefficients. So it's semi-related to Descartes, but what this means is, this is kind of cool, this means that 2 is the upper bound. There are no answers that could be above 2. 2 is an upper bound for the possible answers. So if you have a list that's like plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 1, you can kill all the positive numbers above 2. You don't have to try them. You know they don't work. In this problem. In this problem, yes. If, if you divide by something and it comes out to have all positives, you kill everything. That means that there's no numbers higher than what you try that will ever work. And it's semi-related to the whole argument here when you have positive stuff. So there's this would be, 2 would be an upper bound. Similarly, if I divide this by negative 3, what do we see? Let's see. It will be related to the other part of Descartes' rule of science. I know I have my negative 3. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, So then it alternates signs everywhere. So if you divide by a number, by a, so here, you divide by this, and it comes out to be alternating signs, that means that's a lower bound. 
all the negatives below negative three, you can chop off. You don't have to worry about them anymore. Yeah, so let's say if it was negative three, positive three, then negative six, would that rule still apply? If it's alternating, okay. yes. Okay. Yes? So like, every single one has to alternate? It can't be just one alternating and then the rest one alternate? As all the way through okay. for this to be true. Cool. And it's exactly related to that second part of Descartes' rule of signs we talked about. Yeah. And that's with the negative number, right? Yes. No, no, no. Any number. It, they, they just have any positive, they just have any negative. Just because, but if I divide it by four and these all these came out to be alternating, then four is a lower bound, which means the answer has to be above four, which kicks ass, then you can kill all your negatives and anything below four, it kicks ass. So what I wish you to realize is if you have a list and that card doesn't tell you shit, right? It's like it could be four or two or zero, and the other one's four or two or zero, I don't know. Uh, and so you start to try stuff out, pay attention, if, even if it doesn't go in. If you have all positives or alternating signs, that still means you can cut out a lot of your stuff. Are you with me? So you still have to try some, but pay attention to what happens if it doesn't work. It still might tell you something. So on the heels of that, let's do this last thing. I'll finally keep you here. Close to all the time. I'm like, yay, yeah. So get used to that. Do this. Don't forget to post eight, three and three quarters. It's still not gonna work. Right? Still gotta. What does it work? Still gotta work. Unless I get teleport back to my office, I am going to forget. Don't take it personally. It's just a feature of my memory. Huh? If you're able to do online homework, pretty damn sure you know how to email somebody. So, yeah, just email me. Remind me. Yeah.